Where will the A's play? And it's a payday for Sonny Gray. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Wayne Coy and another episode of Locked On A's, your first listen every day. Hope so. You know that we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on YouTube, too, if you like the video version. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. That's your team every day. And, of course, your team is the Oakland Athletics. They've been my team since I was a little guy, longtime A's fan, lifetime, in fact, and a uh, longtime media dude, been behind a microphone for a couple of decades as well. Nice to be here and good to be talking about the stuff we're passionate about. And that's, of course, baseball. And well, at least I think anyway, the Oakland A's will get into that in just a little bit. Uh, today's episode, though, is brought to you by FanDuel. You know that FanDuel wants to make every moment more. And right now, you can take advantage of a great deal if you're a new customer. $150 in bonus bets for you. And all you got to do is place a $5 bet as a new customer, win that bet, and get the $150 in bonus bets from FanDuel. It's a good time to do it. FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's where you need to go to get started. And get started, we will. Kind of an interesting story today uh, breaking out of Las Vegas in that uh, we, of course, have watched the A's uh, be the, the kings of flip-flops when it comes to their Las Vegas location. Uh, they started off a long time ago talking about being at the festival grounds, which is over on the north end of the strip by the stratosphere. And then the owner of the festival grounds said, really not interested in doing a deal there. The Rio was in play for a while, and they would have been able to go over there for just $1 uh, to be able to get the land and build their ballpark for a buck. But uh, I guess they thought that wasn't worth doing. So instead, they announced kind of a surprise site, which was the Wild Wild West site on Tropicana, which is just west of the Las Vegas Strip. Much easier uh, area to get to, especially if you're a local. I mean, for me, as an example, it's a hop in the car down one street all the way until the very end, and then a quick jog over uh, on Trop, and I'd be at the ballpark. Never have to get on the freeway. Well... That isn't the case at Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard over behind the Tropicana Hotel, which is where, you know, the A's have announced they're going to be building their ballpark. Uh, of course, they've got the money to do that. And it was designated by SB1 uh, to go exactly to that location. Didn't say the A's, by the way. It didn't. It said Major League Baseball Stadium at that location. Well, the interesting development today is one Bally's Corp may not have the money to be able to do what they want to do, which is develop that site and build a brand new hotel, probably not called the Tropicana, probably called Bally's. But um, that's maybe up in the air now because of uh, financial issues and funding, which seems to be kind of the song that everybody's singing. And we certainly heard it about the A's. There's a reason why they're on revenue sharing. And they say in terms of being able to build at this location, they definitely needed the public funds, which were 380 million. And then beyond that, even talked about financing uh, the rest of the amount needed, which at the time was 1.5 billion. But most experts, uh, economists say that it's going to be much more than that, just based on uh, inflation and the fact that those numbers were all from uh, uh, taken from the Allegiant Stadium project when the Raiders built their park. So certainly that was 2016, 17. A park opened up in 2020. The stadium did. Uh, those costs are ancient history. There's no way you can build uh, at those costs. But that's how they were uh, figured in the first place. So that's where the $1.5 billion came from. Likely going to be higher. There's certainly a delta between the $380 million that the, uh, the public funds that were uh, given to the A's from the Nevada legislators. And then... That delta, which is what John Fisher is going to have to cover. He has said already that uh, as part of this deal to get that money, that he would be responsible, the team would be 
for any overruns, and certainly there are going to be some extra cost, and that's all going to have to come out of John Fisher's pocket. Whether he has it or not, that's a whole nother story. Uh, but right down at the other end of the strip, over where those festival grounds were, an interesting development in the last week or so, in that the All Net Resort a hotel and arena that's been talked about being built here for about oh, a decade. Uh, finally, the uh, folks at uh, Clark County said, that's it, we're not gonna give you any more extensions because they too have had issues financially being able to come up with the money to finish this project. And in case you're wondering what we're talking about, well, here's a little taste. <laughs> The most famous desert in the world is about to blow your mind again. But this time, we're changing the game. The exclusive club of owners on the Las Vegas Strip will soon make room at their table, not just for a new owner, but a self-made man. From Inglewood, California, a world champion. The time has come for the first world-class resort of its kind on the Las Vegas Strip. Welcome to All Net Resort and Arena. Two luxury hotels, a breathtaking 3,000-seat dinner showroom, an entertainment and sports arena under an unmatched retractable roof. All Net Resort and Arena will be the world's sporting event destination with something for everyone. From premier luxury suites to breathtaking designed rooms for the value-minded guests, you'll be steps away from your favorite entertainment event. Or treat yourself at one of our exclusive retail shops. Enjoy our spectacular rooftop dining, five-star luxury spa, and lavish infinity pools and cabanas in a tropical setting. It's a resort for tomorrow's lifestyle today. Using advanced technology to provide patrons with a curated, personalized experience throughout their stay. We're combining your favorite sporting events with your favorite entertainment to provide you with an unforgettable experience. All Net Resort and Arena is a revolutionary, non-gaming, business, and family-friendly destination with something for everyone. Hi, I'm Jackie Robinson. In 1979, I became an NBA champion. Come join me on this journey as I get ready to do it again. All Net Resort and Arena a world-class sporting and entertainment destination for all. So, a couple of observations, okay? First of all, I want somebody to put my coat on for me. When I get out of my car, I'm ready for my coat, just like that. Jackie, got it going on. Uh, Jackie Robinson's been the guy, sort of the lead man behind this project for, like I said, like a decade. That uh, video, the hype video, whatever you want to call it, about a year or so ago that that was released, kind of an updated version of the couple that had come before that. I got to tell you, the thing looks sweet, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wanted to go. So a couple things uh, at play. One is, obviously, we got through the pandemic, uh, some better than others. Uh, financially, it's been tough for a lot of companies to be able to regroup. Economy still, uh, you know, uh, for the most part, kind of trying to figure itself out, right? So there's that. Uh, according to him, though, the investors were ready to go, although there was some hesitancy because of the fact that it was not a gaming property, meaning no casino. And in Las Vegas, sometimes no casino equals no bueno. And that may have been uh, along with the fact that there is another group building an arena down at the other end of the strip, which has got uh, the NBA dead in its sights. So there was a question of whether or not maybe it was overkill because you had 
the all net arena here plus the one that's uh, being built down on the other side and then of course t-mobile right in the middle of the strip where the golden knights play and possibly that could be home for an nba team as well so uh lots to think about but uh, clark county kind of made it uh, a foregone conclusion because they said basically we're not going to extend any longer uh, our our deal with you there at that particular site so because of that the deal's off the table and that means that that space is now available which takes us right back to where we started which is the a's and their locations and where would they play if you were keeping track it was festival grounds rio rio to the wild wild west wild wild west to the tropicana and now maybe the all net arena site I'll tell you the big difference would be instead of the postage stamp that's behind the trop right now, nine acres, which they've said, they've reiterated, that's all they're giving the A's. Instead of that, I think this is like 26 acres, which they would be able to develop uh, as they see fit. It's already been raised. They've already actually put shovels in the ground, took them back out, but they put them in the ground. So uh, this could be a ready-made situation. Now, Depends on who you talk to. The folks over at Vital Vegas say that that ain't happening. In fact, they put that uh, that particular area way back. But you'll be surprised to find out that they say the odds, as far as they're concerned, as best landing spot for the A's is Oakland, California, according to Vital Vegas. Wow. Okay, so Oakland at the top of the list, they had... Uh, I think the Festival Grounds back at number two, Rio at three, Tropicana at four, and they said the All, all Net Arena area was a non-starter. But I heard from somebody else today who said uh, that it very much could be something that could be considered. The question, though, is would they be able to change that legislation, which is directly tied to that Tropicana site? Not quite sure, uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, uh, I got to tell you what's going on with uh, my friends at FanDuel uh, right now. They've got you where they want you in terms of excitement in the football season. This last weekend was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You got to get involved. FanDuel wants you to be, and they want to make it easy for you because if you're a brand new customer and you put a $5 money line bet down, that means you just pick the team that you think is going to win, and you do win. Well, then you get $150 in bonus bets on the spot from our friends at FanDuel. They want to make it fun for you watching your favorite football game play out the way it's supposed to. And I'm saying this because, well, I guess it did play out the way it was supposed to. I thought maybe there was a chance the Raiders could possibly pull out a win against the Chiefs. What was I thinking? Put the hopium pipe down, Wayne. Okay, get in into Locked On uh, and the deal that we've got for you with FanDuel. I want to make sure I have this website correct. Yes, it's FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Go there, get all the details, have fun this season with FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. You take advantage of that deal. Hey, Ken Korak, we talked about him uh, on Thanksgiving and the fact that we are so fortunate to have him as the lead broadcast voice for the Oakland A's, and he has been for such a long time. In fact, I, on Thanksgiving, I did my top 10 list of things that, as an A's fan, I'm thankful for, and Ken was right there on the list at number nine, and for good reason. Well, there's a great piece. If you get a chance to read it, check it out. Melissa Lockard uh, in The Athletic talking about Ken and giving you a lot of background on him and his career and his family and how he got started and his relationship with Bill King and with Vince Catronio and uh, what it's been like to be the voice of the A's for all these years. One of the piece, the parts of the piece that really got my attention was, uh, and they, they describe it pretty well, I think, that Ken in 1979 was a, uh, you know, just, I, I guess you call it a wannabe broadcaster just getting started getting his feet wet had done some college i think at that time some minor leagues and was uh, keeping his chops by going out to the bleachers at the coliseum in 1979 with a tape recorder and practicing his play-by-play -play. well when i read that i about fell over because in 1979 at the coliseum not in the bleachers in the second deck yours truly and his 
Radio Shack Tandy cassette recorder were doing the same exact thing that Ken was doing. So I reached out to him today and I said, uh, first of all, congratulations on the piece because I thought it was really well written and so good to see him getting that kind of attention. He's just a great guy. Uh, but then I also let him know that, hey, not only was I there when you were, but I was in the, the second deck most of the time. Sometimes, though, I was in an auxiliary press box. Uh huh. Red Rush, who was the A's lead announcer at the time, uh, he would every now and again be a good dude and see this kid come in with his tape recorder and find a spot for me either in the corner of the auxiliary press box or sometimes even better, I would be able to go to an empty private box, which, hello, it was 1979. The A's were 54 and 108. There, there were plenty of empty boxes. So that's what I would do. It was kind of cool. I felt like a somebody back then. I think I've got those cassettes somewhere, but uh, it was a great, a great time. And that's what Ken said today. He said those were great days, and they were kind of the beginnings. He also admitted that he's got the same uh, cassette recorder or one very similar, and that it's in his garage. Wonder what that thing's worth. Probably about ten bucks, be my guess. Anyway, congratulations to Ken Korak, definitely one of our favorites. Okay, uh, the question that I've asked on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, is in a poll, after you've endured everything that you have, are you still an athletics fan? That's the burning question. And the answer is coming fast and furious. Uh, check it out, by the way, if you want to get your vote in, you still got time, five days left. But 891 votes so far, and your choices are, are you still an A's fan? Yes, until I die. No, they're dead to me. Or maybe I'm kind of watching and waiting. Those are your three choices, right? So you got the two extremes and then kind of one in the middle. Well, yes, till I die so far at 15.5% of the vote. Not good. Uh, no, they're dead to me with 36.6% of the vote. And maybe I'm watching, I'm waiting. I mean, considering when you keep hearing things like we just heard from Vital Vegas, like they say the number one landing spot for the A's is Oakland. What? Okay. Anyway, that's over 84% of the people who have responded that have checked out at least to some degree, some more than others. I mean, I've got friends of mine that have said, forget it, I'm done. As soon as that vote was unanimous, they were Audi 5000. And I've got others who've said, well, you know, let's see what happens. You never know. Maybe they'll stay in Oakland. And if they do, then I'm certainly going to continue to be an A's fan. Most have said, if they go to Las Vegas, forget about it. Right? And then there are some who say, hey, it doesn't matter where they go. Green and gold till I die. Love to know what you think, and you can certainly uh, get your, your voice in there. You can voice your choice, and you can do that on Twitter or X. Look for the poll. After all you've endured, are you still an athletics fan at Locked on A's? That's where you'll find us on Twitter or X. I don't know anybody that calls it X. No one. Zip that call it X. But that's what they call it, so we will too, I guess. So Sonny Gray. Without a doubt, one of our favorite A's of all time. As far as I was concerned, the minute I saw him pitching at Vanderbilt, I was like, please let us draft him. And we did. And, of course, meteoric rise into the rotation, pitching in the playoffs against the Tigers. He was that guy. And then, of course, we watched him leave. In fact, it was announced today, Sonny Gray is now going to be playing for his fifth Major League Baseball team. What a deal, though. He got three years, 75 mil, and can you blame the Cardinals? First of all, he's worth the money. Had a great season last year for the Twins. A little up and down when he was with the Reds and the Yanks. In fact, I never, ever thought that he fit in with the Yankees. Uh, to a degree with the Reds, definitely with the Twins, and certainly with the A's. So we'll see what happens with the Cardinals. They've always been a pitching-rich team, and I just have a feeling that it's going to be more of the same now that they've got Sonny Gray in their rotation. Hey, Locked On has launched the very first ever national 24-7 streaming sports network. 
no matter what your sport is, if you like NBA, you like hockey, you like football, baseball, of course, all of that available to you 24-7, 365, covering you on the local angles and all the different locked on markets. And then, of course, the big national stories as well. Uh, available for you on YouTube. All you got to do is subscribe. Again, the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel locked on sports today i hope that you'll check it out it's pretty cool and i'm kind of happy to be a part of it actually on there with the locked on mlb last week talking about the a's of course and the big move or not okay some days in history a history we like to call it uh well one in particular and it was this date november 27th 1984 when for the fifth time in a row, and what would end up being the fifth of six times in a row, the guy with his hat all the way down, playing the shallowest center field of anybody I've ever seen, except maybe Willie Mays, Dwayne Murphy, gold glover again for the A's. And it was announced on this date, November 27th, 1984. It was five in a row for Dwayne, who uh, earlier had some company out there tony armis and ricky henderson also winning gold gloves at one point but nobody was better defensively than murph just fantastic in center field the guy like i said shallowest center field you'd ever see just basically daring you to hit it over his head and if you did he'd go run it down he was that good so congrats to uh, Dwayne murphy all these years later for all that gold that he had right there in that oakland outfield well, Oakland's own Jimmy Rollins celebrates his birthday today. Of course, never played for the A's, although I sure wished he had. There were a lot of years there where he was uh, number one on my Christmas list, but just never worked out. You know, he had 15 great years with the Phillies. And then a couple after that, he played for the Dodgers, of course, playoff appearance with them and with the White Sox. 17 years in total for the kid from Ensenel High School in Alameda, Jimmy Rollins, toothpick in his mouth and picking it on the field and the guy could hit too and of course he grew up an A's fan so would have been nice to have seen him play for the A's just never worked out it was kind of like that with Dontrell Willis as well if you recall and then it's all in the family Jose Tartable celebrating birthday number 85 today happy birthday Jose the Cuban outfielder who played for the A's first in Kansas City 1962 through 66 and then of course in Oakland 1969 and 1970 and the cool oh by the way of course and you probably know this is that he is the father of former A's outfielder Danny Tartable yeah all in the family both of them playing for the A's which is pretty cool well, we got lots to keep our eye on, of course, here in the next, oh, I would say week or so. We've got the winter meetings coming up and the winds of change again, blowing in the valley. I'm here in Vegas, but of course, a lifetime Bay Area kid who grew up watching the A's. And for all of those stated reasons from before, I would sure love to find a way to keep them home and bring Major League Baseball to Las Vegas in the form of an expansion team. Don't know if I'm going to get my wish. Vital Vegas says we might. Uh, but there could be some movement regarding that uh, location. Like I told you, now that the arena site on the north end of the strip over by the stratosphere and the brand new Fountain Blue and Resorts World. OK, Sahara, that area, if you know Vegas, you know where that is. The festival grounds is there. The A's really like that spot. And now the arena spot is also available after Clark County said, that's it, we can't extend you anymore. So the arena plan looks like it's pretty much off the table. Could there be a Major League Baseball stadium there? Don't know. We're going to have to watch and find out. Also, an update from our friends at Summer of Cell, the documentary that's coming soon. And schools over stadiums. Where are they at with their appeal? Alexander Marks promises we'll get an update, and we will. And hopefully you'll get back together with us again as we do it every day right here. Your team every day, of course, on Locked On A's. A's fans, this is the place for you to be, and I'm so glad that you do. Thanks again. I'm Wayne Coy. Until next time, you keep on swinging.